Now we will turn to our colleague, Linda Meyer. Linda is also a recognized expert in the field of mediation. Linda is a full-time practitioner who mediates an average of 150 cases a year in a variety of areas, including employment, commercial, insurance, real estate, and tort law. She is a graduate of Wellesley College and the University of Michigan Law School. She's a trial lawyer who transitioned her practice into mediation in 1990. I'm happy to say she is also an adjunct professor at Pepperdine University School of Law's Institute for Dispute Resolution and is an internationally known speaker and trainer. Linda is going to begin the discussion on the kinds of issues that are discussed in mediation, uh, including legal issues, factual controversies, uh, the interests of individuals or companies, uh, and other interests. Linda? Thank you, Tom. When thinking about the mediations that I have done over the years, um, I've been a mediator for 18 years. One of the things that I realized is that everyone has a different focus. And that is because, as a mediator, I feel that one of the things we do is to mirror and deal with the parties in front of us. In the cases that I mediate as a, as a mediator, all of them have lawyers representing clients with them, similar to an arbitration setting. And so the interests that are being discussed are a combination. The, those that serve the legal interests, which the lawyers are advocating for their clients, and the interests of the parties, what Nina Meyerding early, earlier referred to as facilitative, the emotional concerns, the hidden agendas, the issues that people are not comfortable speaking of that are underlying the litigation. So whether it be in employment cases, whether it be in commercial matters or real estate matters, I feel that the degree to which the personal issues are discussed, the, the percentage of discussion between personal and legal depends on the lawyers, their willingness to take risks and allow their clients to participate while balancing their interest in representing them since the case may not settle. My experience as a commercial mediator in the United States is that fortunately or unfortunately, our legal process is very much a part of it. And so it is not limited to just a reconciliation of the parties it also has to deal with the component of financial recovery, which has been brought into the case as a result of the filing. So for all of us, I think, that are participating today that have an interest in peacemaking and in bringing things to a conclusion that is amicable and getting past our differences I find that it is always a challenge because I have to respect and understand and give credibility to the lawyers as parties to the process. It is not possible to simply say in our setting that the lawyers are irrelevant or that they must step aside because that is not to honor the role that has been chosen for them by the parties. That is not necessary, of course, if the parties are dealing with each other directly, but in all my cases, they are not. So there is a balancing that must go on between the interests of the participants and the legal interests, the factual controversy that is known, and the hidden interests that even companies have, not just individuals. I deal with companies that for example, have a potential public offering in the works, and so their reason for wanting to settle is based on that. I deal with other companies who have 
issues with the person in charge and they don't want them to be revealed. So they have an interest in settling quite apart from the individual situation. As a result, all of these things must be balanced. And it is, to me, a great joy as a mediator to work with the differences amongst us and to see if it is possible to find a common thread with everything that is being discussed in the individual case. Thank you so much. Thank you, Linda. Well, I have a question um, or a comment because Ms. Myers was talking about the presence of lawyers in mediation, so oftentimes you have to balance the interest between the parties um, as well as the legal interests. Are there any, my questions are twofold, are there any cases in which uh, lawyers are not present, and if so, is it easier to come to a conclusion of the dispute? The reason I ask that question is, in China, there is a um, perception or misperception that lawyers tend to mess up things. You know, they, they create hurdles, they create issues and problems. And in most cases, well, in some cases, lawyers are not really present at these mediation or even arbitration cases. So I would like to hear your perspective on that. Um, I, I would like to address the second part of if it's easier <laughs> if lawyers are not involved, and that is an unequivocal yes. <laughs> However, <laughs> the reality is that they, uh, and I'm going to let Nina address the cases because we do have many where lawyers are not involved, and I'm speaking based on my experience. Um, it is more difficult, of course, because the framework is different and because it's a win-lose mentality when you're dealing with the legal risks and what a judge might do, which is where the lawyers are generally focused. Those cases also involve sometimes a mediation between the lawyer and the client, not just across the table between the parties. I must tell you they are more difficult, but from my perspective, much more interesting and have kept me very interested in this work because there are different concerns and interests depending on who you are dealing with. Uh, in addition, I think we look at a lot of cases that have not been filed as lawsuits. I think when cases are filed as lawsuits, we tend to have lawyers present. Much of my practice is, the, is doing the mediation before a case is even filed. So, for example, in the workforce, even pre-grievance, even pre-formal filing of any process, a company may call and say, Nina, there's a dispute. We don't want it to escalate. Can you come in sooner? And so at that point, they don't want to have lawyers involved because they don't want it to be as formalized a process. In most of the family mediations I do, the clients have consulted with lawyers but have chosen and their attorneys have chosen not to come with them. And so they will sign, the lawyers will sign any final agreement, but as far as the mediation, the parties, at least to the mediations that I do, uh, do not bring their lawyers. What I find is that we are able to talk a lot about the non-legal issues as well. We are able to respect bringing other people into the room that may not be parties. So in a family mediation, if I'm working with people from a very collective culture, it's not just a husband and wife. It may be grandparents and other uh, children or siblings. And so you may have 10 people in that mediation who are not parties, but who are very relevant and very important to reaching a resolution because all of them are impacted. Those kinds of cases lawyers have difficulty with because if the lawyers are focused on the legal issues, they have a hard time understanding sometimes all the other interests that need to be addressed. So in most of my cases, they tend to be before a case is filed, and when the case is filed, then lawyers are usually involved. If I could comment also on this issue, uh, I agree with everything that everyone said so far. Um, it's also interesting to me, though, that when we begin to think about how uh, is it easier or harder when the attorneys are involved, 
Sometimes a complexity that happens is that if the lawyers are not involved and if the mediator is a lawyer, um, the parties, Nina mentioned the fact that often her clients have consulted with an attorney. Um, if they have not consulted with an attorney and they are with a mediator who is an attorney, they may begin to try to, to uh, uh, ask the mediator to, to give them legal advice, legal information, help them understand what their legal rights are in the situation. And it creates a very complicated scenario. Um, and, and there's a certain, there's one extent to which it might be easier sometimes if the lawyers are involved because the lawyer can give his, his or her client the legal advice and the mediator's role is sometimes simplified to say, okay, you know your legal rights and now we can just, um, my job is, is simply to see what we can do to reach consensus. So that, uh, there's many layers on which it operates and uh, it's very interesting to think about. I'm curious what the experience is in China knowing that you have many situations to where people do not have um, lawyers at the mediation and you do have lawyer mediators. Do the lawyer mediators find themselves in a situation of giving some legal guidance?